Hi there, road test time again. Got a nice parcel from Element 14 and Keysight Technologies. Uh, the box is containing the U1461A insulation resistance tester. One of the first things to note right on the outside of the box contains lithium metal batteries. So careful when you're handling, they can catch on fire and uh, explode and all sorts of nasty things or so I'm told. Never managed to have it happen to me yet, don't want it to, but handle with care, okay? So before I open it, that's a U1273A OLED multimeter from Agilent, or now Keysight. And as you can see, this box is considerably bigger than your standard Agilent multimeter. You know, my U1272, same size as well. And you could fit three of these inside this box. So I'd imagine we've got something a bit more than just a regular case around a meter. So first off, a great big inner box. It's uh, with what looks like a plastic handle. So whatever this in here, we have a really nice big plastic box holding it. So that's the first meter I've seen with a big box like that to deal with. U1461A insulation resistance tester, OLED. I guess that's two different models there, which is the 1461A and the 1453A, yep. So I guess the 1461A is the bigger one of the two. So let's see which one we have inside here. Sporting the new Keysight logo. Uh, funnily though, just noticed the, uh, you can focus on that, but the little molding still says Agilent. I guess they're still playing catch up to the uh, changes in name. So we have the meter here. It's the uh, U1461, so it's the top of the line meter. We've got um, two sets of probes, little doors with extra things. So watching the videos, it looks like we have the uh, standard set of uh, crocodile clips with the remote activation um, button control so that you can actually do the one-handed testing and have it controlled right up by the uh, system under test, which is nice. Uh, I've got another hatch here with some stuff in it. Well, Bluetooth adapter comes with it. It's really nice. I already have um, the 10 meter version of this for my other meters. This one, you can tell the difference because it's got the orange and the gray as uh, separate colors in a molding. This one is actually supposed to be a 100 meter version. So you should be able to connect to it with your PC or laptop from quite a distance or your cell phone, depending on how you're doing some remote monitoring, which of course is one of the big features of this. Uh, what else do we have? Standard set of silicone leads. That's pretty consistent with all of the uh, Agilent multimeters. Uh, sorry, I should start trying to make sure I keep saying Keysight. Um, the uh, new they actually, all the moldings still say Agilent. So the new Keysight uh, infrared uh, USB adapter as well. This one is the newer model. There's the older gray one, which actually won't work with PCs or laptops anymore because the, drive, uh, the driver chip inside here is one of the older model FTDI chips and the new Windows 8, Windows, uh, later Windows 7 and things will not um, talk to it anymore. So you need to get the orange ones if you're gonna be buying one. All right, um, so that's included, which is nice. So it looks like they've uh, done a really nice job of making sure you've got everything available. So let's have a look what else we've got here. Certificate of calibration, uh, supplementary sheets, thank you for purchasing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess we can ignore that for now. Um, insulation multimeter quick start guide. And looks like we have two um, temperature probes this time with the, uh, my other Agilent meters. Um, all they sent with those was a K-type probe. This one looks like it's got uh, two probes. Let's have a look here. You've got one adapter for the probes, but we have the standard uh, K-type probe, which is known by with the yellow one. But we also have here a J-type probe, which I believe gives you um, higher temperature capability, I think. I'll have to look that up and, and see. 
but uh, it's a different, anyway, it's a slightly different technology in the way that they're working and a different uh, characteristics. So we'll check that out later, see how accurate they compare to each other and my other meters. Um, so what else is in here? Oh yeah, we've got the meter itself and we have um, these four probes. So it looks like there's two different kinds of probes here. This is the standard one, which has come with all my other meters with the short exposed tip on the end. I like the fact that they've got these uh, finger guards to stop you sliding towards any high voltages. And if you consider that as an insulation resistance tester, we're going to be pumping out up to a thousand volts. You really don't want to get your fingers near that. Plus these things are um, cat three, sorry, cat five rated up to 600 volts and cat three rated up to a thousand volts. Um, protection is important. And the other one here, the other probes have got the longer um, exposed shafts as well. So you've got insulation right up to the tip and you've got a pair with uh, longer exposed metal work on them. And these are all very, very sharp. So they come with little uh, protectors that just fit over the caps to prevent you from uh, basically stabbing yourself. So I'll put a couple of those back on for now. Put them back in the uh, container. It's nice that it has everything in here. So let's just put the um, box aside and we'll have a look at this meter. So first things first that I noticed with this meter compared to the um, other ones is it is slightly wider and slightly longer than the uh, other models. So this is the U1273A next to the U11, sorry, U1461A, the, the 1461 being the new insulation resistance tester. Other notable things on here is you've got a special uh, or difference in connectors here. This is your microamps and milliamps uh, terminal. You've got your common terminal and you've got your positive, but there's this extra pocket on either side of this that does not fit a standard um, probe connector. If I take one of these standard ones, it'll go over in there, no problem at all. But if I try to put it in here, it doesn't fit. Same as on the uh, microamps and milliamp side, it'll go in there in the common, but it will not go in these smaller ones on the side. What that's for is to connect the extension um, remote control probe, which has, uh, I'm just gonna pull it out so I can show you. This is the lead here. And what it's got on the end here is a special connector. And what, it's what it allows you to do is with this end, when you press it, it closes the contacts. There's a pair of contacts on the end of this. Uh, when you have it plugged into the meter, it allows you to remote activate your testing. All right, um, so that's a nice little feature. This lead also, of course, that's with it is also way, way thicker than the normal test leads that come with the meters as well. Uh, probably because one, it's got two wires in and two, it's gonna be generating thousand volts. So let's just pull that out. So one of the obvious things that's different about this meter from the other ones is if I bring them in, is this is the U1271. As I said, it's a little bit on the smaller side, but that's LCD. So let's just put that there. And this one is the 1273, which is actually an OLED one. And as you can see, that one's yellow. So uh, very distinctive. I think the uh, characters as well on the uh, U1461 are slightly larger as well. Um, but let's put this uh, just as a quick check. We'll see how they um, line up from an accuracy perspective. We'll put some volts into all of these and see whether how they compare. They're all four and a half digit. The um, LCD and the yellow OLED one, um, my original meters, are 30,000 counts each. And the Keysight one, uh, the U1461, is apparently uh, 60,000 count, but for whatever reason right now, it is showing only a three and a half digit. So there's probably some setting um, in it to increase its um, range, like the resolution somewhere. Haven't read the manual yet, but uh, we'll get to that as we go through the testing. Um, so let me just uh, reduce down the volts on my meter. Sorry, I'm using my power supply rather crudely to uh, provide the volts here. 4.999 volts according to my power supply that I'm outputting. And you can see here, 
the, the key site is actually reading a little bit on the high side, um, but it is reading a little high there when the other two are reading uh, five volts spot on. That one's reading quite high. Let's just take it down to um, one volt. So you can see there at one volt, it's uh, two of them are reading 0 0.998, 0 0.998, and that's reading one volt exactly. Um, so that's within spec, but for some reason at certain voltages, that's at three volts. So they're all uh, pretty much agreeing with each other there. Four. They're all agreeing. Five. Well, now it's reading. Yeah, it's on that five volt setting. It just seems to be a little bit on the high side. T7 is reading. Well, it's changed its resolution actually, because it's a 60,000 count. It's flipped. So it's a 60,000 count. So the minute I go to 60, it should stay there. But if I go above that, it's probably going to kick into its new range. It's gone into the 60 volt range now. Um, my other two meters are, uh, they're, well, they're still sitting in um, 30,000 count. So obviously the, uh, I have to figure out how to add the extra digit of resolution on this thing. 12 volts. See, that's reading spot on at 12. There seems to be a little odd thing with this. Um, anyway, um, let's just try, I've got my um, Vichy resistance standard that um, Vichy were kind enough to send me, which has some very, very accurate resistors. So let's just uh, give it a go with some resistance ranges and see how it does there. All right, to be fair, I'm using my shortest probes um, so that I don't introduce any um, resistance offsets because of the uh, lead. So that's uh, zero ohm set there because these are four terminal inputs. So these two are actually shorted together inside. So I'm reading exactly zero on there, so I don't need to do any um, zero offset. Now the first resistor I've got here is one ohm. And um, let me just show you on the back of this so you can see how accurate these are. All right, my one ohm resistor is 0.999942 ohms. My 10 ohms, well basically I've got way beyond what the meter can read. Um, and as you can see, my 100 ohms, my 1K, my 10K, 100K, and my 1 meg, uh, well within 0 0.01 or 0 0.005 or even better percent tolerance. Um, this is a box that Vichy kindly made for me uh, before Christmas and sent to me and measured the resistors for me with some of their most uh, accurate measurement devices and recorded the values for me before they sent me it. This is using their um, Vichy metal foil resistors that are um, very, very low temperature coefficient, very low drift, um, ultra stable resistors. So uh, I was doing some projects where I wanted to have some stable resistors and we're talking to them about having a, a resistance standard box for my lab that I could use for experiments and testing and things like that. So they kindly offered to make one for me so that I could use it on the videos. So thank you Vishay for this and uh, let's see what the meter now reads. So let's plug it into the one ohm range. This is one ohm exactly now. So it's reading 1.0 exactly. Um, to give you a comparison, I haven't checked this, all of the specs yet for that meter, but um, I want to just put my um, U1273 on there instead to see uh, in, a, in its low range what it will actually give me. So let me just uh, rearrange this a second. Let's just go to ohms. And you can see there that the, um, I've just, I haven't zeroed this one actually. I need to null it out because it's going so low. Uh, null, okay, now let's put it on the one ohm. So 1.001, .001. so that's got um, four digits of resolution for reading. It's pretty accurate there. So it's reading accurate, it's just not got very many digits of resolution. So let's just go down to the 10 ohm range. So 9.9, .9, that's pretty good. And we'll go to the 100 ohms. So that's pretty well spot on. One kilo ohm. Now this should bounce up a range now because it's a 600 ohm range. So 1.000 kilo ohms, uh, 10 kilo ohms, 10 spot on, 100. Oh, one digit out, that's pretty good. And one mega ohm, that's within 
0.2% obviously. Uh, the resistor itself of course is uh, very very accurate. So it's the meter that is slightly out there but it's still well within um, its tolerances. That's 0.1% accurate for one meg. So that's pretty good. I'm uh, pleased with that. The, uh, it's well in excess of the uh, specifications for the meter for that. Um, still I'm a little bit concerned on the um, voltage ranges though. Um, especially on that 5 volt one. So we'll have to go back to that when we do a more detailed review of the meter. Anyway, that's good for that. So let's just unplug it. One of the things I'm actually curious of, and um, I'm not sure what is how this is going to behave, is to test the um, insulation resistance checking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my meter to um, my U1273A to voltage mode and I'm going to fix the range up at um, a thousand volts that way because I'm going to make this one now generate the voltages that it claims to be able to generate so right off the bat we're going to use um, 50 volts here and so when I push this button it should generate 50 volts and try and measure the resistance of the device at the other end now because this is a voltage range it's probably got a 10 mega ohm input resistance or roughly so what we should see on here is it should measure um, 10 mega ohms or thereabouts and there we have it I've let go of the button now but if I just keep the button pressed you'll see that it's actually outputting 50.6 volts so that's uh, fairly accurate for the voltage um, generator and it's reading 9.9 .9 mega ohms um, for that output and there's confirmation as well that's the voltage out on here too that's coming out of this thing so 50.6 volts is what I'm measuring uh, it's telling me it's generating 50.57, so it's still 50.6, and I'm reading nicely the 9.9 .9 mega ohms, which is built into the um, input of my U1273A. So let's bump it up a value. Okay, go to 100 volts. Test that. I guess it takes a minute to uh, create the get the voltage going. So that's 101 volts. That's a little more accurate than the previous one. So that's not bad. Still 9.9 .9 mega ohms. Let's go up to 250 volts. Do the test. So that's 249.9. So that's pretty good. Uh, again, still reading 9.9 .9 mega ohms. Let's go up to 500 volts. So now we're getting into very dangerous voltages. Um, now, this is a very low current, though, so they're not going to kill you. Now, if you notice, I'm keeping, I've, I don't have both hands on these meters either. Um, even though these are very low currents, you still need to be uh, safety aware. So I'm keeping one hand out of the way and I'm just using one finger to push the test button. So let's generate 500 volts there, 9.9 .9 mega ohms still, 500.4, uh, 500.3. So they're pretty well in agreement. Now let's go to the highest level range, which is 1000 volts. And I'll push the button. And there we go, 9.9 .9 mega ohms, 999, 1000.1 uh, volts. So that's crept up a little bit. That would imply that there's a very slight amount of um, capacitance potentially, but maybe not. It might just be the generator fluctuating around a little bit. It's reading exactly 1000 volts on the U1461A, and it's reading 1000, well, 1000.4 volts on the other one. So that's pretty accurate 1000 volts. All right, that's as far as I'm going to take it for this initial uh, quick look. So all the other things on this meter uh, we're going to explore in the next video, including the uh, ability to measure the length of wire based on its capacitance, uh, frequency measurement, all the standard DMM um, checks and things like that. We're going to have a look at the T, DAR, and PI functionality, which is all to do with insulation resistance testing. I will go explore my house and find a few appliances as well that we can throw into the mix and have a look at. But um, yeah, that's it for this video and uh, I'll be back soon for the next stage.